Hello everyone. This is again Zaida Khan from the Department of Mechanical Engineering, KIT's College of Engineering. In the last lecture or in the last sessions, we have started with the introduction to the subject of costing and finance management, wherein we have studied the law of supply and demand and the circular flow of economy. So there was a reflection spot that was asked at the end of that particular session, which was what do you think is the most affected parameter because of the law of supply and demand? Well, the answer for that is nothing but the cost of the component and thereby the scarcity or the easy availability of that particular resource. So in today's session, we'll be starting with the efficiency and types of efficiency. Let us start with what exactly is efficiency. So when do you say that a system is efficient? We say that a system is efficient when it is able to give the desired amount of output with the available resources or with the optimum utilization of the available resources. So basically efficiency is a measurable concept which could be measured using the ratio of useful output to the total input. Efficiency over here that we are going to discuss is nothing but the economic efficiency which is concerned with the optimal production and distribution of scarce resources. It signifies a peak level of performance that uses the least amount of inputs to achieve the highest amount of output. It requires reducing the number of unnecessary resources to produce a given output which also includes the personal time and energy. It is also dealing with the minimization of the waste of resources such as physical materials, energy, time while accomplishing the desired output. With this, let us have a reflection spot which is for an efficient economy which thing often influences the price range in the market. Let us take a moment to think for this, think over this question. So once we have understood the basic concept of efficiency, let us take a moment to answer a question which is for a system or for an economy to be efficient, which is the thing which often influences the price range in the market? Let us take a moment to think for this question. So to answer this particular question, the thing which often influences the price range in the market is the scarcity of the resource. Let me explain this to you with an example. Consider a fruit which is out of season and not possible for the market to keep in stock. So in such a situation, the price of that particular fruit will be much higher than the other available fruits in the market. So here, the main challenge in front of the market will be to retain its efficiency, thereby coping up with the higher price of the fruit. So we say that for an efficient economy, the thing which often influences the price range is nothing but the scarcity of the particular resource or that particular product. With this, let us go to the next part, which is types of efficiency. Let us discuss about the different types of efficiency. So we'll be studying the productive efficiency, the allocative efficiency, X efficiency, efficiency of scale and dynamic efficiency. Let us go to the first one, which is productive efficiency. Now, when do we say that the system is productively efficient? It is basically when it is able to produce the required amount of goods and services with the available resources. So the productive efficiency is something which is usually measured on the production possibility frontier and it occurs when the maximum number of goods and services are produced with a given amount of inputs. Let us have a quick look at the curve which shows the quantity Q on the X axis versus the average cost on the Y axis. So the productive efficiency takes place at the point Q1, which is the point of the firm's average cost. 
So, if you see the curve, it is possible, it is sorry, let us talk about productive efficiency. So, this occurs when the maximum number of goods and services are produced with a given amount of inputs. The productive efficiency is a term which is basically measured on the production possibility frontier. We say that a company is productively efficient when it is um, able to produce the required amount of output in terms of goods and services with the available amount of resources. Let us have a quick look at the graph which shows the quantity Q on the x axis and the average cost on the y axis. So, if you see the curve, it is impossible to produce more goods without producing fewer services. The productive efficiency occurs at the lowest point on the firm's average cost which is depicted by Q1. Let us go to the next type of efficiency which is allocative efficiency. This basically occurs when the goods and services are manufactured or distributed only as per the customer preferences. So, an economy could be productively efficient but produce goods people don't need. So, in that case we can say that it is allocatively inefficient. Let us again have a quick look at the graph which shows the quantity Q on the x axis versus the average cost or the price on the y axis. The point Q1 is the point wherein the price of the good equals the marginal cost of production. So, that is the point where the company is allocatively efficient. But let us have a look at another point Q2 which shows the marginal cost of rupees 15 for the quantity of 40 which is much higher than the marginal cost of rupees 6 for the same quantity of 40. So, in this case there is an under consumption of resources. So, we say that an economy could be productively efficient and also produce goods which people are needing, but it need not necessarily be allocatively efficient. Let us go to the next type of efficiency which is X inefficiency or X efficient. So, this is a sign or a measure of efficiency when the actual average costs are much higher than the potential average cost. So, this occurs when the firms are not in a position to provide incentives to cut down the cost. For example, a monopoly may be having super normal profits, but it is spending very less incentives to get rid of the surplus labor. Again, when we have a look at the graph, we can see that the actual average cost is plotted and the potential average cost is also plotted. But when the actual average costs are much higher than the potential, we say that the system is X inefficient. The next type of efficiency is efficiency of scale. This occurs when the system is able to produce on the lowest point of its long run average cost. Here we need to understand what is long run average cost. Long run average cost is the average cost which is incurred by an organization in the long run or for a longer period of time. Again when we have a look at the graph which shows the quantity Q plotted on the x axis versus the average cost on the y axis. We can see a quantity Q1 at a price or at an average price of P1, but quantity Q2 is the point which shows the long run average cost since the average cost remains constant for a longer period of time. So, that is the point where the company is benefiting itself from the economies of scale. The last type of efficiency that we will be studying is dynamic efficiency. Now, when do you say that a company is dynamically efficient? It is when it is able to retain its efficiency over a longer span of time. So, this basically refers to efficiency over time. For example, 
uh, a Ford factory in 2010 may be very much efficient for that particular time period. But as it approaches 2017, it could have lost its relative advantage of efficiency. And if you compare, it is now treated as inefficient. So the same has been depicted on the graph, which shows the quantity Q plotted on the x axis versus the average cost on the y axis. The long run average cost for 2010 and 2017 has been plotted. And if we see that there is a lot of difference in the long run average cost. So the company is not successful in retaining its efficiency from the for the period from 2010 to 2017. So in this case, we will say that the company is dynamically inefficient. Now, what could be the reason for this dynamic inefficiency? It is basically the introduction of some new technology and work practices to reduce the cost over time. Thank you.